this, um, but as you know, our legislators are a tad busy at uh, this moment in time. So I'm going to lead us through our agenda today, which I'll share with you momentarily. Um, does anybody have any questions before we get started or want to raise your hand and let me know you're in the wrong working group or anything else like that? <laughs> okay. I set up a handful of slides just to kind of walk us through and keep the meeting moving. Um, but if you have questions at any time, feel free to raise your hand. You guys all know what to do. I think we have a chat here, yes, that we can um, use. This is a meeting set up on Zoom, so we have the accessibility of all of that, uh, all those fun functions. Um, and I'll do my best to keep the conversation moving. I just wanna start by saying that the goal really today is just to do some ground setting, kind of review our charge, and. Uh, get ourselves familiar with the housing plan um, and what it is that we're going to be tasked to do. And I want to take a minute here just to also thank you for your time for volunteering for this um, work. We'll be working together over um, the next many months, if you will. Um, and I appreciate and know that everybody's time here is valuable um, and know that uh, we may be doing some work outside of this group too. So I just wanted to thank you for that as well. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen so we can get started with some introductions and review meeting agenda. All right, here's the group you're on. This is the date in case you are confused. And now it's not gonna let me move my slide. <laughs> Hold on one sec. There we go. Can everybody see the agenda up on the screen? Great. So you all received this agenda in advance of the meeting and it also had um, some notes on it about our next meeting dates, which we'll cover at the end of the meeting as well as some links to some relevant materials, which we'll talk about too. So today I just wanna spend a little bit of time introducing ourselves to one another so we know who's on our screen or hopefully maybe eventually in our room. I'll get to that in a moment. Then we'll do a quick review of the specific charge as it relates to this working group um, per the commission's um, design, if you will. Third, we're just going to have a presentation from uh, our friend Mike Santoro at the Department of Housing about the consolidated housing plan, sort of how it came about, what it's designed to do, what the process currently looks like for going through and creating that plan. Um, we'll hopefully have some time to do some question and answer with Mike. So if you have questions as we're going through that presentation, um, jot those down. And uh, finally, at the end, we'll cover our future meeting times and locations, and then next steps and some homework for all of you to do between this meeting and the next meeting to really get us into the stage of doing the work that we have ahead of us. Anybody have any questions or anything else that they expected to see or would like to see on this agenda? Just some notes that I like to use when we run our meetings at the Partnership for Strong Communities. If you can keep your camera on um, for your comfort and ability, that's great. It lets us all see each other as we get to know one another. Please use the hand raise feature when possible. I'll do my best to facilitate these meetings along with Rep Williams and it always helps um, when we are trying to coordinate conversation. Finally, move up your voice and listening as necessary and um, respect time, we'll do our best, and I will do my best to make sure that we respect the meeting time that we've all set, discussed earlier. So first, we'll just run through some introductions. So for purposes of today, I thought we'd start simple, just the name and organization, and then any experience you have or knowledge you have about the state consolidated housing plan and or its process that you want to share with the group or maybe something that um, caused you to be interested in uh, asking to be on this group, if that's what you did, maybe you were voluntold to be on the group, <laughs> but any um, reason why you're here, reason you have an interest in this particular topic. So the way we'll do this is I will turn off my slides and we'll do it in a popcorn style. So for those of you who aren't familiar, you go through the introduction yourself and then call on anybody else on the screen randomly whose name you see who hasn't had a chance to introduce themselves yet. And the next person will do the same. We'll try our best to keep it moving. So I'll start. My name is Kylie Goslin. Those of you who don't know me, I'm the executive director of the Partnership for Strong Communities. The partnership is a 
housing policy and advocacy organization. Um, we've been around since 1998. So I do a lot of work in the affordable housing space and some in the homelessness space as well, um, planning and zoning related work and a bucket of other things. Um, I'm happy to be here. My experience with the consolidated plan um, is, uh, I'll say, limited, but I first became familiar with it in my last role when I headed up Hartford's development office. Um, so I'll be eager to uh, go through this process with all of you and see what we are uh, tasked to do. And I'm excited to see your ideas for possible changes moving forward. So with that, I will turn it over to, let's see, Nathan. Hi, uh, Nathan Carnes. I live in Windsor. Um, and I would say my, my experience with the, uh, the housing plan is from the user side. I actually do work at Department of Housing, but I'm here as a, a citizen. Thank you. And who would you like to select to go next? I, I see a Robert Boris. Hi, how are you? I'm Robert Boris, a longtime resident of the city of Broughton. Uh, also have a background in real estate and doing adaptive reuse uh, to provide housing in different areas. Uh, I'm also running for a state rep of the 41st, so I'm very interested in uh, the issue pertaining to our region and looking forward to learning and participating. Dan, Devlin. And you're on mute. Sorry about that. Thank you. Uh, my name is Dan Devlin. I'm from Manchester, Connecticut, uh, self-employed. Uh, I like to use every opportunity to participate in either local or state government when I can. I've been on a few uh, committees and groups here in Manchester, Connecticut over the years. And uh, I heard about this one through Jason Rojas. So uh, I'm participating just as an interested citizen. Uh, all right. How about, uh, how about, uh, Kirk Carr. Uh, thank you, Dan. I appreciate that. Um, my name is Kirk Carr. I live in Ridgefield, Connecticut. I've lived here in Ridgefield uh, for a little less than two years, Reloc relocated from Clinton, Connecticut, where I served on the Planning and Zoning Commission, as well as the Board of Finance, uh, worked with Stanton House as their treasurer, also treasurer of uh, placemakers of Clinton. Um, but having relocated to Ridgefield, um, I've not really gotten involved officially in any um, local activities, civic activities. So I've got some bandwidth to, um, to put into something. And this uh, intrigued me. It's a topic I've had some interest in for some time. Um, I have to confess, I've been somewhat critical of, um, of some of these activities. So I thought but rather than complain, I might as well get involved in, uh, and try to contribute something constructive. Um, I have lived in Connecticut since 1980 and uh, lived in Stanford for about 20 some odd years. So um, I have lived in Connecticut for some time. And so I hope I can make a contribution. And I think I see a Michael uh, Sandborough, maybe if I said that right, Mr. Sandborough, maybe you could be next. I think you're talking about um, me, Michael Santoro. Santoro, um, I'm sorry. That's perfectly all right. I'm the Director of Policy Research and Housing Support for the State of Connecticut Department of Housing. Uh, I've been in affordable housing uh, my entire state career, which is in excess of 36 years. Uh, and I am, in fact, responsible for the creation of the um, five-year consolidated plan for housing and community development. And let's go with Margarita Albin. Margarita. <laughs> Hi, I'm Margarita Albin. Uh, I'm a chair of a planning and zoning commission in Greenwich, Connecticut. And, oh, Anika Singh Lamar. I'm gonna pick you because you love your doggy. <laughs> oh, I love that. Sorry, I don't know why what has gotten into her, but I've rescued her from the children who are trying to play a game of chess in. So um, I'm Anika Singh Lamar. I live here in New Haven. Um, I have a crazy dog. Um, I'm here because I 
care about affordable housing. And I think there should be more of it. Um, I know some of you are here because you think there should be less of it, but I'm here because I think there should be more. My experience with the state consolidated plan is just that I've read it, um, but uh, that's, about, that's about it. So I look forward to learning and hearing more. And I apologize for my, she seems to have calmed down now. Um, I'll hand it over to Roger. Roger, you're on mute. Well, now I'm muted. Uh, so my name is Roger Sensoric. I'm the communications director at Connecticut, uh, Connecticut Working Families. And I've always been interested in housing policy, but uh, in working families, we have been hearing consistently how it's one of the biggest hurdles for families to make a living in the state. The state is an affordable essentially because of its housing. And it's both a barrier to families and both a barrier for economic growth in the state. So I volunteer to, to be part of this group because it's something that can do a lot of good. And it's not just for our families and for the people that we directly represent, but for the state as a whole. And I'll pass it to, I guess, Erica. Erica Barn. Yes, hi all. I am the clerk for planning and development. So I am here behind the scenes, making sure that the meeting runs smoothly. So let me know if you have any concerns or questions or need help. Uh, and then, so I'll just pass it to Alex then, let him get that out of the way. Okay, so my name is Alex Patasini. I'm one of the uh, sessional attorneys in the majority leader's office this session. So I'm the one you keep getting emails from but scheduling the meetings. And um, I'm gonna pass it over to Ashley, the other sessional attorney. Hi everyone, as Alex mentioned, I am the other sessional attorney. My camera has failed me, so I'm not even gonna bother with it today. Um, Alex will be sending you emails, but I also may send you some in the future. So we'll just be here in the background helping with some logistical stuff. Um, I'm going to popcorn it to Anthony. Hi everyone, my name is Anthony Apolity. I'm from Richfield, Connecticut. Um, I'm a geopolitical consultant, uh, but I'm also a property investor and um, as a lifelong Connecticut resident, I'm interested in the direction that housing is gonna take in our state over the next you know, five, 10, 15 years. And so that's what's brought me to this group. And I will send it over to Matthew Pafford. Uh, hi everyone, Matt Pafford, uh, OPM. I'm, I'm in OPM's Office of Responsible Growth. Uh, we do a lot of different things. One of them being the state plan of conservation development, which touches on housing. Um, I'm not deeply involved in the con plan other than uh, Mike and I see each other annually when he gives me an update on the action plan. And every five years when they revise it, I sit in on those meetings. So I'm happy to be here and uh, I will pass it over to who's next on my screen, Will. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Will Biederman. Uh, I run policy at the Housing Authority here in New Haven. Uh, my own personal experience with the plan is, is limited to reading it, but I know that our agency um, has been has participated uh, with, with sort of a particular interest to the plan's um, vision and engagement with public housing, given that we administer a fair amount of it here. Um, and with that, I will pass it to Maybeth. Thank you, Will. Hi, everyone. My name is Maybeth Morales-Davis. I'm the Deputy Director at Newbert Housing Services of Waterbury. We're a nonprofit organization um, headquartered in Waterbury covering the greater Waterbury area in regards to affordable housing. Um, I'm here, I, ha I have little experience in regards to the consolidated plan, but I'm here to learn more and to just lend my voice as somebody in housing and also as you know somebody representing um, minority and um, urban communities. So I will pass it to um, Ronita. Hello everyone, I'm Renita Lathrop. I live in Derby. Um, I, I'm just new to the housing. Um, I bought my home through the Family Self-Sufficiency Program because I was on Section 8. So I'm coming in as a citizen. Um, and I don't really have much, um, I never heard of this program before, but I wanted to be part of the change. Yeah. And I pass it to Marsha. Marcia, you're on mute. Hi, I'm uh, Marcia Franco. I live in Oxford. 
Um, I've been interested in the topic of affordable housing for quite some time as a matter of social justice. Um, I have recently joined an organization called um, All In, which is part of a valley-wide um, organization um, that started about a year ago under the leadership of TEAM. And one of the core values is to have affordable housing in, in the Valley. And I have, I don't have any other real experience, but I don't have experience with the plan, but um, I'm interested to learn and contribute what I can. Uh, I think we just have Randy and Jim left maybe. Okay, I'll pass it to Jim. Hi everybody, I'm Jim Paris. I'm the CEO of the Home Builders and Remodelers Association of Connecticut. Um, I represent about 900 business companies uh, that are, my association is primarily made up of developers, builders, remodelers, and um, those members that facilitate our, our industry, i.e. Uh, architects, engineers, realtors, uh, attorneys, and suppliers. Um, I, I too am a lifelong resident of Connecticut, and uh, certainly this is actually uh, my first experience with the plan as well, uh, being uh, you know with the association just for a few years. Um, you know, I, I I bring the perspective of um, a community of, of, of builders that um, understandably believe in affordable housing and want to see more housing uh, of all types. Uh, a diverse housing stock in Connecticut uh, is important to our um, livelihood and to the economy, uh, and uh, just improving the lives of all in the state of Connecticut. So. Um, you know, to build affordable housing, we first have to figure out how to build affordably. So thank you. All right, did we miss anybody? Oh, Randy, hi, Randy. <laughs> this is like gym class being picked uh, last. Um, <laughs> I'm, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm totally kidding. Uh, my name is Randy Pincus. I'm a staff attorney with the Department of Housing. Um, glad to be part of this group. I'm going to defer to Michael Santoro um, to tell you more about the Consolidated Housing Plan and Department of Housing's role with it, because I think that's why he's here with us today. It would be great to have your expertise on this on this working group, Randy. Thanks for being here. Um, okay, I think we've gotten in everybody, and we're almost on time via my little schedule that I've got here, about four minutes behind. Um, so with that, I just want to review the charge for this working group. I'm just going to put it up on the screen and read it to all, you all so that you have it again. And it's also in the agenda. The reason I'm sharing it is just, again, to sort of ground set us and also uh, for purposes of the homework that we will cover later. Let's see. Hopefully my will cooperate. No. Okay. Why? So here's the group charge so that you have it. Oh, and now I've erased it for all of you um, up on the screen here. So as you can see what we're really um, tasked with doing is not just reviewing the plan itself, because as you know, the plan will change, but the process for developing the plan um, and really looking at whether there's statutory changes um, that you feel, uh, we feel as a group um, may be warranted. And we will then make, and, and also the implementation um, of those. So those two buckets are really what we're going to be focused on for the work of this group. And we'll be obviously making recommendations to the larger commission as part of our, of our work here. And again, this charge is reflected in the agenda that you have so that you have it available for your review. Are there any questions about this? You know, it's wonky statutory language, but I wanted to make sure that we're all. Hi, Lee. Hi, this is Nathan. I, I just want to make sure now I, I followed the link to the statute, which appears to be one and a half lines long. <laughs> so, so that is the uh, statute that we're uh, uh, tasked with seeing if there should be any changes. Well, there's other ways we could make statutory changes um, related to this, and we can, we'll get into that later. The statute itself, the um, 8837T um, and Mike, Michael will walk through a little bit more about the Code of Federal Regulations, which governs much of what this looks like. And then 
the author, the statute um, that sort of ties to that from the Connecticut general statutes is um, 8-37T, but there may be other statutory changes that we want to make related to this plan. I don't think it's explicitly limited to that one, um, but we can get more clarification on those. And then I notice at the end we have um, uh, Ro Roman numerate two implementation of such plan. Right. So there may be um, elements of the implementation that are not necessarily statutory changes, but um, implementation changes that we can make. And if we have questions around sort of where the bounds of, of our authority are, both as a working group and as a commission that are more specific, I know Alex and Ashley are here and can help with that. And I'm happy to take additional questions back to provide more clarity. And I think once we all, I wanted to give us a chance to hear from the Department of Housing about the plan and also give all of us a chance to review the plan and review the existing documents so that we can kind of come back next time with some more of those specific questions. Any questions on this, folks? Jim? Hi, Kelly. Um, you know, for those of us that are relatively new to the process, um, some historical context might be helpful if there's anyone yes. that could give us a, a little insight as to why the charge exists in the first place, what are um, you know, con existing concerns that, that may be at the forefront pertaining to the process as it currently exists? Yes, so I asked, um, when I contacted Mike and Randy about giving a presentation, those are two of the items that I highlighted for them that would be helpful for us to know. Uh, in other words, the origin of how this came about and sort of the authorization behind it, as well as any recommendations that DOH has for areas that we might wanna continue um, reviewing. So I think we'll hear, hopefully hear some of that presentation, but to the extent there are additional um, questions we have, we also have Randy on board as a working group member. So I know that she'll be able to assist with some of that as well, hopefully. Any other questions that I'm missing here? Can I ask you, it's just sure. uh, re reading the uh, statute, it says this is in consultation with the Connecticut Housing Finance Authority. Is, so, is someone representing them to this group or is it, how is that, how, is, how do they interface? How do the two organizations interface? I don't think we have a CHAPA um, member on this group, but I will double check just to make sure we don't have somebody who's missing here today who is part of CHAFA. And maybe Mike can help during his presentation explain what role uh, CHAFA may have in the plan as well. The two departments, um, Kirk, to answer your question at a broader level, work closely with one another to finance um, much of the states, if not almost all of the states affordable housing, uh, CHAFA specifically. Um, is the conduit for much of the federal funding that comes through, for example, low-income housing tax credits and also implements um, a home buyer program among many others um, and works closely with the Department of Housing as they're frequently funding the same projects, but through different funding streams. Um, and we can talk a little bit more about those elements um, and maybe some more level setting on affordable housing generally and affordable housing finance, if that would be helpful for folks in a, in a future meeting. So. Um, I'm not sure I answered your question fully, Kirk, but um, I'll, I'll pause there as well and note that if folks have additional topics after we get through today that you feel would be helpful to have more information on as a group, maybe you're new to certain elements of this work and it would be helpful to have more background provided to you either in writing or in presentation form about affordable housing finance or the role of specific state agencies in that just send me an email and I'll share my email address at the end and I can work to determine if we have a, a critical mass of folks and it makes sense to work that into agenda. And I can also try to find materials to share with you from state agency partners or other groups. Any other questions or Kirk, do you have any follow-up to that? Okay. I wanna note that uh, uh, my fearless co-chair representative Q Williams has joined us. Hi Q, do you wanna introduce yourself to the group and um, and just say hi and let us know if there's any uh, anything specific about the working group's charge here that you wanted to raise up before we move on to our presentation? 
No, so good afternoon, everyone. Glad to be here with um, this awesome group. And first and foremost, I want to say thank you to the uh, the co-chair. That's one of the beauties of uh, working as a team is that when uh, one person drops the ball, the other person is there to catch it and juggle it um, and do it with a smile. So wanted to really appreciate <clears throat> her holding down the fort um, while I had another emergency to, to uh, take hold of. So thank you very much, uh, Kylie. But no, just looking forward to just getting to work. I know one, I think one of the greatest things that we can do in the state right now is make, um, in terms of this work, is around creating a workable definition and understanding of a lot of these um, topics that are complicated, interwoven, and intersectional. So just looking forward to getting us all on board on the same page and uh, leading the charge. So thank you, Director. Thank you. Um, all right, so with that, I'm gonna turn the screen over to Mike Santoro, um, who's gonna give us a presentation on the consolidated plan, which we're tasked with reviewing and making recommendations on. Um, and Mike, we'll do our best to save questions for the end, if that works for you, just give you a chance to try to get through things. I'm good either way, but that's fine, Kylie. Thank you very much. Um, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you. <clears throat> My name is Mike Santoro. I'm the Director of Policy Research and Housing Support here at the State of Connecticut Department of Housing. Um, and I am uh, the individual charged with responsibility for uh, the creation of our five-year consolidated plan for housing and community development. It is a five-year plan. Um, and the consolidated plan regulatory framework um, can be found in 24 CFR part 91. <clears throat> for those of you who are not familiar with the parlance, that's part 24 of the um, code of federal regulations, part 91. It was established by regulation in 1995 to create a common planning requirement for what was at the time for federal grant programs. CDBG, commonly referred to as the Community Development Block Grant Program, which has multiple components, and I'll break that down in a minute. HOME, the Home Investment Partnerships Program. ESG, um, which was formerly the uh, Emergency Shelter Grant Program and had its name changed to the Emergency Solutions Grant Program. Acronym didn't change, but the name did. And HAPWA, Housing Opportunities for Persons with AIDS. The National Housing Trust Fund was added under Title I of the Housing Economic Recovery Act in 2008. And the CDBG, Community Development Block Grant Recovery Housing Program, um, will be added to the next CON plan, which is due July 1st of 2024. Um, our current plan runs through June 30th of 2024, and the new plan Again, we'll be due July 1. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about the consolidated plan itself. It was intended to provide a detailed and comprehensive plan um, at the state level, as well as what is called the local participating jurisdiction level. Think of it as the large communities that get direct block grants of funds from the federal government. They all have their own consolidated plan as well. Here in the state of Connecticut, we are responsible for um, this particular plan as all five of those uh, original four programs, now six, fall under the administrative responsibility of the Department of Housing. Um, what the regulatory framework does is it allows for plans to be submitted in a form prescribed by HUD and by design planning should inform funding decisions that get help where it's needed. To say it another way, the consolidated plan for housing and community development is a data slash needs driven document. Um, in addition, as has been pointed out earlier, there's an additional state requirement under section 8-37T of the Connecticut General Statutes that requires the department to follow the framework spelled out in 24 CFR Part 81. Seems kind of redundant, but in fact, what it does is it requires the department to be sure that it complies with the federal requirement and ties in other legislative requirements in terms of its planning process. HUD identified the need shortly after 1995 uh, for a more systematic and consistent planning process across the spectrum of its grantees. So the six programs that I talked about a second ago, don't just give money to states. They give money to what are called participating jurisdictions, 
or entitlement communities. And depending on which program we're talking about, will depend on which of those two terms we use. For CDBG, the Community Development Block Grant Program, there are actually two components to CDBG. It consists of entitlements and non-entitlements. Entitlements, by their term, are, are communities or governmental bodies that are entitled to a portion of the grant on an annual basis. Non-entitlements are those communities that are too small or I should say those geographic um, organizations that are too small to get a direct allocation from HUD. We, the state of Connecticut, manage the non-entitlement program for the federal government. It is called the Community Development Block Grant Small Cities Program. As the name invites, our funds flow to small cities, communities generally under a population of 50,000. There are some exceptions to that as well. In other parts of the country, entitlements are county level organizations and non-counties or portions of counties are eligible to receive non-entitlement funds versus the home program or the National Housing Trust Fund program where here in the state of Connecticut, there are six what are called participating jurisdictions, the state of Connecticut and its five largest cities. Those five cities all get a direct allocation of home from the federal government. In addition to the state's allocation, we are responsible for administering the statewide home dollars. Again, HUD identified the need for a more systemic approach. And as a result, they created an electronic or online system called IDIS, I-D-I-S, the Integrated Disbursement and Information System. Initially, IDIS was set up as the um, funding distribution tool. Um, HUD then subsequently modified it to actually be the online electronic submission module where we are required to submit data, information, narrative in a standardized format for submission to HUD. And this is what it looks like without IDIS. Okay, you'll see IDIS right here. This is the planning process that is spelled out in the regulatory framework. There's a requirement for public participation and consultation. There's a requirement to, to complete a needs assessment that addresses housing, homelessness, special needs, and community development, and a detailed market analysis, again, that is required to address and consider housing, homelessness, special needs, and community development. That leads to a strategic planning process. That strategic planning process identifies strategies and goals for a multi-year planning period. As I mentioned at the beginning, the consolidated plan is a five-year planning document. It is supported by annual one-year action plans. And earlier this week, as well as earlier today, we had our first pre-draft meeting for the next action plan that supports our current consolidated plan. As you can see on the screen, year one, year two, year three, year four, year five, we are currently preparing the action plan for year three of the current consolidated plan. What you see over here, these are the reporting documents that are a result of the implementation of our annual action plans. Um, for entitlements or participating jurisdictions, this is called the CAPER, for the states, it's shortened to be the PER. It's a performance evaluation report. And our PERs, our performance evaluation reports, are published annually on, our, on the department's website prior to submission to HUD. The econ planning suite developed in IDIS resulted in a template process that facilitates integrated planning and decision-making. We don't have discretion. There are specified screens, modules, data tables, narratives, questions that must be answered as part of that templated process. It ties electronic submission and review to HUD, and it provides the opportunity for standardized reporting. That is how we got to 837T. We are under federal obligation to submit our consolidated plan 
in a specific format with specified materials, a detailed analysis that is spelled out for us, that is the planning process components are spelled out. We can do more, but we cannot do less. The template facilitates integrated planning and decision-making as I pointed out. Over here, this is the original regulatory structure that can be found in 24 CFR part 91. IDIS, the Integrated Disbursement Information System, translated that into these templates, needs, market and inventory, priorities, and goals. And again, you'll see those topics repeated, housing, homelessness, special needs, community development. Again, the goal behind the template is to set expectations, eliminate repetition, promote collaboration, and I'll talk about that in a little more detail, and it has to be based on HUD provided data at a minimum. And I say that for a reason. We can always do more, we cannot do less. HUD specifies data that we are obligated to look at when we prepare our consolidated plan for housing and community development. We can always add our own data. It has to be substantiated, it has to be reasonable, um, and it has to be verifiable. HUD allows us that discretion but at the very least, you must conduct the data analysis on the HUD provided data. This is a graphic of the consolidated planning process. It integrates the components of a grant management cycle into one cohesive, comprehensive framework within IDIS. It incorporates data assessing needs and market conditions, and it connects goals to investments to outcome. We start with citizen participation, we move to determining needs, setting priorities, determining resources, setting goals, administering the actual programs, these six that are covered by the con plan, and then evaluating our performance. The process starts 18 to 24 months in advance. If you think about that, what I just said a moment ago, our next con plan is July 1st of 2024. That means July 1st of 2022 is the two-year mark prior to our con plan. We will begin the con plan process this summer for a plan that will not be ready for two years. And I will tell you, we will take all 24 months to do it because it is complex, it is detailed, and it is, as I pointed out a moment ago, data-driven. So consistent with federal requirements, we have uh, a published citizen participation plan. As a matter of fact, at the moment, we have two. We have a regular citizen participation plan and we have an amended citizen participation plan as a result of COVID-19. Um, back at the start of COVID-19, the federal government published a number of waivers, including one associated with citizen participation. Both of those are available on the department's website and the link the links are here. This is the regular citizen participation plan. This is the amended plan. I'm gonna talk real quickly about a regular citizen participation plan. It requires the state of Connecticut, us, to publish notices, draft plans, public comment, et cetera, through a detailed and specified process. We are not only encouraged, we are required to collaborate with partner agencies, communities, community organizations, legal aid, housing advocates, housing developers um, in this, here in the state of Connecticut, our councils of government. If you can name them, they are on one of our lists for participation and we go to great lengths to engage all of those groups, organizations, and individuals. And I count this organization now as one of those with whom we will consult in the preparation of our next consolidated plan. Whether this committee or working group makes recommended changes or not, consider yourselves part of our planning process going forward. Okay. There are more useful tools, um, planning tools for states in ITIS. 
The template analysis is designed to support our state consolidated planning by integrating data based on grant service areas here in the state of Connecticut. Our grant service areas are our individual municipalities. We are required to look at housing need market data statewide and economic development data provided for CDBG or community development block grant service areas. Again, here in the state of Connecticut, for the most part, that is our municipalities. We drill down all the way to our municipalities and try to get data on what is happening in each of those individual markets. Um, it's, facil it's facilitating collaboration within the state and with partners, the public and other planning processes. What that means is we do special collaboration, cooperation and integration with our other state agency partners. For example, the Planet Conservation and Development, as Matt Patrick mentioned earlier, um, we have to tie our consolidated plan for housing and community development to all other major planning documents by other state agencies in the state of Connecticut. And we collaborate and um, do so, connect with those other state agencies and their planning processes on a regular basis. Um, so the Department of Social Services, the Department of Mental Health, the Department of Children and Families, the Department of Developmental Services, the Department of Education, the Department of Corrections, OPM itself, um, and others. Um, we actually have to review all of their most recent plans and tie them in some way to our consolidated plan. Um, our plan also is to incorporate other public and private funding. We identify state resources as well as private resources that will be brought to bear specifically to match these six federal programs. We go a step farther, not by statute, but by policy. We actually identify and talk about all of the department's resources, federal and state, in our consolidated plan for housing and community development. As I said a little while ago, the minimum is spelled out by the federal government, both through the framework and by electronic system set up in IDIS. We go farther. We talk about our collaboration with CHFA, the Connecticut Housing Finance Authority. We talk about our interaction with the Department of Social Services, the Department of Mental Health and Addiction Services, the Department of Social Services, um, et cetera in fairly significant detail. It's that collaboration, that tie, that allows us to have a truly comprehensive consolidated plan for our housing and community development. That is, we include elements unique to states as well. And in this case, we are required to talk about our method of distribution. For those of you who don't know, what the federal government wants to know is how are we going to make decisions with their money? We have to spell out in fairly significant detail the method or methods we will use to distribute those funds. And I will tell you, it is different essentially for each one of the six funding programs. They each have their own unique programmatic requirements and obligations, and we spell them out in our consolidated plan for housing and community development. If you have not had a chance to read or look at um, our consolidated plan for housing and community development, I encourage you to at least look at the executive summary. It's a very long document. It is very detailed. But the executive summary breaks down the big picture, I think, um, sufficiently that you can get a good grasp for what we're talking about relative to our obligations. Let me talk a little bit about data requirements and process. Um, we are required to use what are called CPD maps data. It provides usefulness for affordable housing community development planning. It is available nationally for all con plan grantees. So here in the state of Connecticut, that's us and the five major cities. Um, it is available down to the census tract level. It is regularly updated. And when I say regularly, some of you may be familiar with the American Community Survey. It is that process that is used to update that data on a regular basis and is available to us at little or no cost. Um, the data is identified 
also by CPD offices, um, public and Indian housing, um, planning development and register. And um, I forget what OGC stands for, I apologize. Um, regardless, um, there are subject matter expert, experts from the reinvestment fund and the Urban Institute are available to us, as well as input from the Economic Development Authority. Finally, we take grantee suggestions down to our municipal level, um, especially our larger communities, do data collection and data surveys on a regular basis. What's going on in their community? We use that data as part of our planning process in the creation of our consolidated plan. This is a chart that identifies some of the more prominent data sets that we use and where they come from. I won't bother um, going over it. Um, I can make these slides available to you um, at your discretion. You just gotta let me know, Kylie, I'll be happy. Uh, you have them actually, I emailed them to you already. Um, you're free, feel, feel free to share these um, if people have specific questions or wanna um, get a better handle on the data itself. As I mentioned earlier, IDIS and the con plan itself are a data-driven decision-making tool. We have to justify to HUD with data on how we are going to prioritize and use the money they make available to us under these six programs. Um, the data-driven tool, uh, as you can see here, it's user-friendly. It is web-based. It's a central database maintained by HUD. Um, it is organized to match con plan assessment analysis requirements. So the data in HUD's data tool matches the data tables required in IDIS. Um, there is a wizard that can help us uh, to prepare maps if appropriate. Um, and there's extensive data available um, for custom geographies. Um, and what that means is, and this is a term which sounds awful, but it's really not. Uglugs, and if you ever hear someone use the term uglug, what they're really talking about are and I forget to you, it's local governments is what it talks about. Um, like, I just want to pause you for one second. Yeah. And Nika just reminded Absolutely. me, Absolutely. looking at the clock that we're getting short. Oh, on. sorry. I'll, no, I'm, I was I'm just remarking done. to Anika. Almost done. done a group chat saying we may have to set up some more time for meetings. So I just wanted to let folks know that um, it, I think it makes sense for us to let you continue to finish the presentation, but we may not get much time for questions today. So um, we'll stop maybe with two minutes or three minutes to go. So I can direct folks as to how we want to handle um, questions through the next meeting. So Mike, why don't you go ahead? And thank you, Kylie. And, and thank you. You gave me the, you gave me the, moment of composure. Um, units of general local government, UGLUGS, units of general local government. Um, and um, there's a map query tool that allows us to highlight areas with specific common characteristics. Again, this is that consolidated planning process. The most important in the initial step is citizen participation. And that happens throughout the entire process. There is citizen participation in determining needs, in setting priorities, in determining resources, in setting goals, and even in administering our programs and doing evaluation. That process is our citizen participation plan. It spells out what we will do, how we will do it, how often we will do it, the time frames for reporting. Um, this is one of the most public and transparent processes um, that you will find amongst the federal government. Um, there is no doubt that this is detailed, complex, time-consuming, but worthwhile. It makes it very clear and transparent that we get these federal dollars and we use them the way, the way that we are supposed to use them. That's it. And that's why um, I, I wanted to uh, let you know, Kylie, uh, I was just about done. But Yeah, no, that's um, perfect. That's perfect timing. I, I want to I want to finish up by saying um, we relish your input into the consolidated planning process, um, regardless of whether there are statutory changes or not. We want your input. Thank Great. you. 
Thank you. I'm going to get to questions in just a second here. I just want to go through um, uh, my last couple slides, which give us some direction for next steps here. Um, so I just, before we move on to questions so that we can use the rest of our time for that, I just wanted to know our next meeting times. They're on your screen. Um, and you should receive hopefully some invitations for those. As I noted, I was noting in my chat to Nico, I sent to all of you, we may need to set up some additional meeting times depending on how much um, we need to work through as far as questions and gathering information goes before we move into more of a decision-making phase. Um, and then the next steps and homework I'd set up for all of you between this meeting and our next meeting. One is to review the existing consolidated plan. As Mike noted, it's really long, but you've signed up to be part of this working group. And I think it's impinging on all of us to spend some time really reviewing that as much as you can, as well as the two, uh, this gen the Connecticut general statute and the CFR that Mike noted. So we have a handle on what's required as a baseline um, on which to build the additional recommendations that we may have. And then I just ask each of you, as you're going through that, to identify two to three areas of focus that you think would be worthwhile for this group to consider. I'm gonna ask that you send those to me in advance um, and that's so that I can kind of gather and assess um, where we're at, whether we have the level of specificity we need so I can determine how to best use our next meeting time for all of you. Um, if you have questions too about additional materials or other sort of related topics that you need more information on, please include those in that email to me and I'll do my best to um, either share that, that information with the group if it's needed by many or send something to you privately. Uh, any questions on that before we go back to the presentation? I see Nathan and Mika have your hands up, but I believe that is that for the presentation. Yeah. Um, I, actually, mine's on the homework. Okay. <laughs> just uh, just pointing out from the presentation, the um, citizen participation plan. I will admit that is a document I have not looked at, and it sounded like maybe that was something to add to our. Uh, list of resources to try to okay. check in on. Great, and I will try to send an email with some more links, um, but note that the some of those, the link to the plan as well as the, um, the base Connecticut statute are in the agenda you have. All right, we have about um, six minutes left and we may need to have Mike come back. We also have Randy, Nathan here from um, DOH as well, who may be able to answer questions in the future. Um, I have one question, but I'm going to start with Anika since I saw her hand up first. So questions for Mike um, related to the presentation and the plan. Anika, go ahead. Charlie, and thank you, Mike. That was extraordinarily helpful and comprehensive, and I really appreciate that. Um, even as somebody who knows this area, it was very helpful briefing. Um, I, listening to your presentation like that, doing the homework we're about to do, it is clear that the consolidated plan is quite a comprehensive document. It is missing a lot. It is not the state's fault. HUD sets a requirement for a plan because it wants to know how we're going to spend its money. The consolidated plan has nothing to do, nothing is probably a little extreme, but it's not a document that looks at housing affordability as a policy problem. It is a document that looks at, here are some subsidies that are set as a, by the federal government, you know, HOPWA, ESG, all these acronyms. These are buckets of money that the federal government puts out there that it um, asks the states and local governments to spend, and it wants to know how we plan to spend them. And it wants to know that we plan to spend them in a way that's consistent with having done some homework on our side. But in terms of housing affordability as a policy problem for the state of Connecticut and really for any other jurisdiction in the country, that is not simply a problem that's defined by available subsidies. That's a problem defined by how much people pay for housing. Can they afford to live where they would like to live? Are they paying too much? Have prices gone up? Has the average homeowner in Greenwich made $350,000 over the last few years by sitting on their butts because housing prices are skyrocketing so much? Like these are massive policy problems. And through the fault of no one, certainly nobody on this call, the comp plan doesn't get at any of that, right? So the vast majority of poor people don't live in subsidized housing. They live in market rate housing. And sometimes they pay for the teeth through their teeth. Sometimes they pay amounts that they can afford, 
But regardless, the vast majority of poor people, not to mention middle class people who are overpaying for housing, um, don't live in subsidized housing. This document doesn't do anything for them. So I would just put it out there to the group that if we were to, to really do a consolidated plan on housing policy as a state, we would look at how what we need to build as a state. You know, I look at Jim Paris here. You know, what 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 his, should his members be able to build? And again, just like the vast majority of low-income people don't live in subsidized housing or deed-restricted housing or 830G housing or whatever, the vast majority of his members don't build subsidized housing. Like that's not what our housing market looks like. Um, so I just put it out to the group and I, I know it's supposed to be a question. So uh, Mike, I guess I'll just ask, you know, what do you think about that? If the DOH is already doing a lot to put together the con plan. And what I'm suggesting is that we need to do something that's actually, if you consider that only one out of five low income people actually get a housing subsidy, you know, what are we doing for the other four out of five low income people who don't? So I, I don't know, I, I'm happy to respond because that study exists. And you're talking about a study, not a plan. Okay. No, uh, no, no. I'm talking about well, a plan. Well, well I'm talking about a plan. So let me let let me articulate a little bit. Um, we did a study. Um, we just completed it um, with the assistance of regional plan associates um, to break down the future, current and future affordable housing needs for affordable, accessible housing across the state of Connecticut. And that um document talks about what we need, where we need it. Um, what it doesn't do is talk about how we get there. That would be the plan component. And I understand, Anika, but that report, that study will in fact feed the next con plan. And that's part of our responsibility. That's why I say federal government lays out the minimum. You must do A, B, C, D, E. We go the extra mile. Um, our con plan talks about what we intend to do, not just with these six federal sources. It does in detail because we are required to do so. But our con plan actually talks about the broader housing policies of the agency. The issue is it is not a living document and it does not react to market change. This, the current plan is the 2024 plan. What happened in the middle it's called COVID-19, okay? In addition to a whole bunch of other stuff as well. Um, but COVID has had a dramatic impact on the housing market here in the state of Connecticut. But what the study told us and the policies that we implement um, are that we as a state need to focus in large part on housing stock production. Uh, if you look at the analysis, it breaks it down very clearly that that is the highest priority. We are already doing that. It may not be reflected in that sense in the con plan, but the department's policies already imp are implementing that. But thank you. And and again, our, our study will be supporting this con plan, and we look forward to engaging in that conversation as we go forward. Thank you. Um, one of the questions I had for you, Mike, and I know we're at time here, so maybe we can address Sorry. it this time um, through Randy, if you're not able to join, would be um, what, if any, specific areas the Department of Housing would um, have an interest in this group um, taking on? I think we'll definitely probably go beyond that, um, and I have my own ideas, and I'm sure many others here do, but it would be helpful to know if there are specific um, areas that DOH thinks warrant consideration. Um, what and Jim, I can add that study to the reading materials, the needs assessment that um, Mike cited that RPA did. Um, but if there are specific areas that Department of Housing um, specifically feels that warrant um, review consideration for required um, uh, additions to the con plan or process um, pieces so, that to look at, please please let us know. And we and I guess we can have more conversation about that next time too. I know, and, we and I'll be happy to come back. You okay, just great. have to invite me. So again, um, everyone, I will send out some more materials to all of you um, for review. And again, if you have, um, take some time to do that, to review those materials um, and send me some initial ideas. It can be a really long list, or but hopefully at least two to three areas that you think warrant further 
um, consideration. I'm going to do my best to try to put together a list and then constructively use our time next time to start um, identifying some areas of focus and, um, and discussion. So I want to thank all of you for joining us here today. I'm looking forward to actually getting some more time to talk back and forth with you soon, but I hope that this was helpful ground setting for the conversation moving forward. And I really want to thank uh, Mike Santoro from coming and um, sharing that information with us, Mike. It was really helpful for us to uh, kind of get where you are at as well as understand the timeline for things. So thank you. Happy, happy to come back. Great rest of this rainy afternoon. Thanks to my co-chair, um, Representative Williams, for joining us here today as well. Have a good afternoon, everyone.